All right, now we're going to discuss DNA in particular. We already know quite a bit about DNA. We know about its nucleotide. It has a phosphate group that's the same or different than the RNA phosphate group. Exactly the same, but it's got a different sugar than RNA, right? The sugar group for DNA nucleotides is deoxyribose, and then that brings us to the nitrogenous bases. I said in the uh, previous uh, videos that there are a total of five kinds of nitrogenous bases between DNA and RNA. Uh, DNA has four of those. It has four kinds, four kinds of nitrogenous bases, and they can uh, be remembered, I think, uh, very easily by by uh, um, thinking of an acronym. And uh, the acronym is a place that maybe a few of us would rather be than watching this video. I don't know. It's hard to imagine, but possibly so. And that is you'd rather be at the golf course. All right. And so, uh, at the golf course, there's a reason, another reason that we mentioned in the previous video for uh, for uh, <clears throat> that order being helpful at the golf course, but unfortunately no points on the next test for answering at the golf course. You must, A stands for the uh, nitrogenous base adenine, T for thymine, G for guanine, and C for cytosine. And so you may be called upon, you probably will be called upon to spell out all, uh, most of those, maybe all of those. So you need to be able to spell those out. And so that means there are how many kinds of DNA nucleotides? Well, I guess there's a whopping, what, four? A phosphate sugar A, a phosphate sugar T, a phosphate sugar G, phosphate sugar C. And so there are four different DNA nucleotides four different DNA nucleotides and uh, we can symbolize those. I like to symbolize them like this. Phosphate sugar A and there I, I like to draw a little boxes around for reasons that will become clear shortly. A phosphate sugar T, a phosphate sugar at the golf, see I use it too, phosphate sugar C. All right, phosphate sugar A, phosphate sugar T, phosphate sugar G, phosphate sugar C. Well, how are they joined together to form a DNA molecule? Well, uh, you know from the previous video that a couple guys became famous forever for figuring this out. Uh, Mr. Watson and Mr. Crick, Crick. And so what did they figure out? They figured out that these nucleotides are arranged like a ladder. And so what I'm going to draw first is half a ladder. And uh, realizing this could go on for thousands of these, we'll get things started like this. Uh, I've tipped my nucleotides over, and I've got one right there like that, phosphate sugar A. Now the sugar group is connected to the phosphate of the next nucleotide, so phosphate sugar T, let's say. And then a phosphate sugar G and a phosphate sugar C at the golf course. Are they always in that order? Well, of course not. Uh, <clears throat> if I'm in class with a bunch of students in front of me, I say, uh, you may not have noticed this, but if you look left and right, the student next to you looks differently than you do. I bet you didn't realize that. Yes, and that difference is spelled with how many letters? four letters. Why do you look different than your fellow students and from maybe that plant that's in uh, you know in your home someplace? Because you have somewhat different uh, uh, arrangement of A's, T's, G's, and C's than your fellow students and quite a bit different arrangement of A's, T's, and G's, and C's than uh, that plant that's uh, sitting across on that table over there perhaps. Now that's only half a ladder, ladder. of course and this goes on for thousands of these. What about the other half? Well, the reason I put boxes around these is to emphasize the fact that on the other side of the ladder, 
the nucleotides are oriented in the opposite direction. And so I want to draw the boxes first. <coughs> And so, we're tipping our nucleotides over here. So what's in this one? A phosphate sugar something connected to a phosphate sugar something connected to a phosphate sugar something connected to a phosphate sugar something. Well, what is that something? Well, here's where the uh, at the golf course is helpful. At the golf course, at the golf course. What Watson and Crick discovered is that A's are connected to T's and G's to C's. So if that's an A, this will be a T. If that's a T, this one will be an A. If that's a G, this will be a C. If that's a C, this will be a G. And of course, uh, as we also saw from looking at our book, this is not a straight up and down ladder. It's a twisted ladder. What's the term for that? Not twisted ladder. That, that won't cut it on the next test. Uh, what do you need to come up with? You need to come up with double helix, double helix. A helix is like a slinky, except a slinky when you expand it is a single helix. Why is this a double helix? Because each side of the ladder forms an individual helix. So what do we have here? We have a uh, molecule in which the sides of the ladder, so to speak, are what? Alternating phosphate and sugar groups. Phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar. Same thing on the other side going the opposite direction. Phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar. And this goes on, of course, for thousands of these. And what forms the rungs of the ladder? Well, those are the nitrogenous bases. And so we always have an A connected to T and a T connected to A, etc. Uh, those form the rungs. And where are the rungs connected to the ladder? At the phosphates or the sugars? Hmm, I think they're connected to what? The sugars? Yeah, sugar AT sugar, sugar TA sugar. Yes, the rungs are connected across the sugar groups. All right, and so um, what does DNA stand for? What does DNA stand for? Well, DNA stands for, most of the, quite a bit of the name is the sugar group. It stands for deoxy ribo that's a D and then part of the same word nucleic there's the N and then the A is acid deoxyribonucleic acid yes could I ask you that on a test I surely could finally in this little section now uh, there's the question below, what is the total length of DNA molecules in every human cell nucleus? So in the previous video I showed you a picture of a human cell. It has a little nucleus there. And uh, uh, what's the total length of DNA inside that human cell nucleus? A number that may have astounded you. I don't know if it did or not. But there's how many, how many, what, how many feet? Six feet six feet of DNA in every human cell nucleus. Wow! We'll see how all that works out in later units. But that is our, uh, that's it for DNA for right now.